Rabbi handed over some scrolls to me last year, and there I studied the works of one of his acquaintances, George Carlin, who said, never underestimate the power of the foolish people, for if they are many in a country, they will elect a president. So I speak on the power of foolish people. My attention was drawn recently by Lassisi Olagunju to a folk tale on fools recorded by the poet A.K. Ramanujan in his folk tales from India. There was a kingdom of fools. In this kingdom, both the king and his ministers were idiots. They reversed everything and denied justice to their people. They changed the day into night and night into day. They ordered their people to sleep during the day and walk only after dark. Anyone who disobeyed this order will be put to death. The people did accordingly for the fear of being sentenced to death. One day, two men, a priest and his assistant, visited the kingdom and found everything in reverse order. They were surprised to see all the people sleep in broad daylight. And when darkness fell, everyone became active. Their surprise doubled when they went to the market and found that everything cost the same. This is no place for us. Let us leave, the priest told his assistant, who, however, said he was not ready to leave the place of good and cheap food. These people here are all fools. This thing you enjoy won't last. Fools are dangerous people. Soon, they will visit their idiocy on you the priest said to his assistant and left the kingdom. One day, a thief broke into a rich merchant house by making a big hole in the wall. But as he was going out with his loot, the wall of the old house collapsed on his head and killed him on the spot. The brother of the thief was mad he came running to the king and pleaded with him to punish the merchant for not building a good and strong wall. The merchant was brought before the king. The king heard the case and found the merchant guilty of the thief's death. The merchant, in his allocutus, put the blame on the bricklayer who built the wall. The bricklayer pleaded with the king to punish a dancing girl who distracted him when he was building the wall by going up and down that street all day with her anklet jingling. The dancing girl, now an old woman, was brought to the court. She put the blame on the goldsmith. She told the king that she had given some gold to the goldsmith to make some jewelries for her, but he delayed the walk and made her walk up and down to his house several times. The ghost meat was produced before the king. After hearing the accusation against him, he said he should not, blame, he should not be blamed for the lady's up and down behavior. A new stake was ordered to be ready for the execution of the merchant. But it turned out that the merchant was too thin to fit the stake. So the king ordered that a fat man be searched for. The king's eyes fell on the priest's assistant, who had fattened himself for months of cheap food. He pleaded with the king that he was innocent, but his pleadings were of no use. While he was waiting for death, he remembered his boss, the priest, and communed with him in the spirit. The priest arrived at once to save his aid. 
He whispered something in his disciples' ears. Then the priest did the unthinkable. He requested the king to execute him first. When the servant heard this, he said that he was brought here before his master. So he, he should be put to death first. The king was surprised to see the, the fight between the boss and his boy over who should be executed first. When the king asked them the reason, the priests, you know, hesitantly told him that whoever died on the stake first would be reborn as the king of that country. The one who died next will be the minister of the country. The king was puzzled and alarmed. He did not want to lose the kingdom to someone else in the next life. So he discussed the matter with his ministers. You know, greed and inordinate love for power are manifest symptoms of foolishness. Like African, you know, life president. This foolish king and his ministers arrive at the conclusion that they should go to the stake, be executed, be reborn as kings and ministers, and live happily thereafter in power and glory. I shall go to rabbi again. Yeah, you Better need, you come need back to from back. the rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> come back from the rabbi and explain this your story. Um, um, you see, um, what Nigeria need now is um, a priest. A wise one. A priest, uh, as described in that story, that will come and um, whisper, whisper. <laughs> so that <laughs> The foolish leaders <laughs> can go to the stake. Who wants, yes, <laughs> can go to the stake and then Nigeria will be free. Amen. It's not, uh, it's not about to happen. It would, but it would not happen. Uh, because, uh, unlike that kingdom, the ones you have here, they are foolish, but they've surrounded themselves with um, some wise people who are so much in love. With power? No, they're in love with money. So they take money from the coffers to, to finance their stay in office. So it will be difficult. So that's why the people, it is the people now who must rise and insist, just like the minister for, uh, sorry, the chief of defense staff has said, mm. it is the people that must rise now and defend themselves against the king. Uh, the, the series of blame game was also a very interesting part to the story. Yes. You know, it, it was this, no, it wasn't this, it should be blamed on that, on that, on yeah. that. It is actually accusing the owner of the house. Mm, yes. And, and, and we have a, a whole lot of that. Walls. And the king was hearing the matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have a whole lot of that in the society, in, in our society. True. People not being able to take responsibility True. for what is, has been committed to them. Rather, they will look for who to hang the blame up, up, upon. And so for six years, we have been, you know, tossing and turning blame game here. Yes, it was 16 years of PDP. After that, it was this person. Was In the fact, the president came out yesterday to even say that it is the fraudulent people online that are causing insecurity in Nigeria. It yes. is well known in Nigeria, then, my people. And then there's food insecurity, there's uh, the general insecurity. Even when our troops decide to fight back, they fall from the sky. Mm, so that is a blame game. <laughs> to continue on. May God help us. Amen. Bolao is up next after the break with the population planning on his mind.